So squash vine borers will cause pretty much every squash vine in your garden to collapse, except for a select few. If you haven't tried my injection method to get all the squash you want throughout the summer months, it's the perfect option for the Pepo squashes. I can link it in the description, you can browse my channel for it, but that method is vital for the traditional summer squash. Now, this is where this journey comes in handy. If you do not have time to stick to an injection schedule, then this might be the method for you. In 2021, I trialed the Rampicante squash Tramagini. I tried that out to see how it did in my garden and I found it to be borer proof. It was reputed to be borer resistant, but it was actually borer proof in my garden. Now, this is actually a winter squash and I was harvesting it green and it was just phenomenal. It is one that you absolutely must try and I will need to do a separate video on that one. What was wild was the borers actually started to attack my Tennessee spinning gourd instead. So it took out a lot of the gourd's little squashes or on that plant and it turns out that that gourd is actually part of the summer squash family and that's why the borers went after that plant. Now that I know that there are varieties out there that are truly resistant to the vine borer and some actually borer proof, I'm going on an adventure this year and I'm trying all the varieties that people have said are resistant to squash vine borers or vine borer proof. So I'm going to give these all of these varieties a try in my garden this year and I'm going to document it so that you guys can give them a go as well. I'm going to document everything. I'm going to tell you which plants do what, how well they do, whether or not they succumb. So stay tuned throughout the summer of 2022 because I will be doing everything I can to find the varieties that all of you can grow at home. There aren't many people out there who deal with borers on a scale this bad and many of you that are probably watching this video are probably in the very same boat that I am. You are probably struggling in a way that every other solution didn't work and you probably viewed my injection video and hopefully tons of you had great success with that last year and if you haven't gotten a chance to try it yet this is your year. I promise you're going to get squashed as long as you inject. Now if you don't have time to inject some of these winter squash varieties may May work, may not. So if you would like to trial some of them in your own garden along with me, that would be a great way to experiment and see whether or not you can get some this year out of them. So again, I have not tried these varieties. That's what this experiment is for this year. So let's check out some of the varieties and see what we've got going. All right, so let's get started with the varieties. First, we have Honey Nut. I'm very hopeful because it's a machado, but it's harvested ripe, so we'll see how far it makes it. Then we have Dickinson Pumpkin. This is one of the stars of this experiment. It's very promising. Going to try this one green too. There are lots of testimonies about its resistance to the squash vine borer. Pennsylvania Dutch Kirkneck, also very hopeful. It's a machada, should be able to cook green, and it looks similar to the Rampicante, only it's whiter. Seminole Pumpkin, another star of the experiment, lots of testimonies about its resistance. Known to be eaten green, also known for excellent climbing, so this one will likely be featured. This is probably going to be a favorite. Tatumi Squash. I'm worried about this one and not expecting much as it's a pepo variety. It can be eaten green or ripe and there's lots of testimonies of resistance. So maybe it's a viner and it'll root along the vine. Maybe that's why it's said to have resistance. Tennessee Sweet Potato Squash. This one is a little different. It's a mixta. It's a hybrid, I do believe. I'm hopeful should be resistant. I'm not finding a whole lot of information, so this one's a wild card. Good old butternut. I think it'll do okay. I've grown it but lost the vines, likely due to squash bugs. I wasn't really paying attention. Wasn't a fan of it previously, but now love it. These are old seeds that I bought for just two cents at a liquidation outlet. Long Island Cheese. This is a machada that should be resistant as well. I read about this one being decent for squash vine borers, and I already had it on hand. Musted Province. These are also supposed to be resistant. I got these in a trade, so hopefully they're originals or hand-pollinated. 
I'm hopeful but not counting on it due to cross-pollination risk. I'm not going to try to pronounce this one, but it's another Mashada, but likely known in the U.S. under another name. This is a Ukrainian seed company that I'm absolutely in love with. And of course, last year's superstar, the Rampicante, forever a must-grow in my garden, eaten ripe and green. I'll feature this one at some point, whether that be soon with old footage or this summer with additional footage. I'm surprised I didn't last year. I can't wait to see what these varieties do. I had to order from multiple seed companies to collect these, and Mary's is the only company I haven't tried yet. This will be my first year, but I hear good reviews about them. The countdown is officially on as we barrel towards planting season, and I am getting more excited by the day. Thank you all so much for your support. Bye, guys.